When's the last time you review the reasons why employees leave? There are five common reasons why employees leave. Hi, my name is Shelley Smith and I'm the owner of Premier Rapport, a business consulting firm with an expertise in workplace company culture. Today I want to talk to you about five common reasons and see how you're doing on them and give you a couple of tips and suggestions. Let's get started. The five reasons, and yes I've got notes, the five reasons. Number one, and these are not necessarily in order, is they find another job. It's something to do with pay or benefits. Poor management, super passionate about that because that's very controllable. Poor product or service, and then finally, other coworkers. So let's break those five things down. The first thing was uh, finding another job. The reality is if an employee is disengaged and you don't have them in the thralls of your organization, um, they can get tapped on the shoulder and check out and go to another location. So the key there on the retention side is the engagement. Are they truly actively engaged and invested in what's going on? Because if not, if there's different seeds, then yeah, they can get plucked. The second thing I talked about was pay itself. So my question here or my tip or my suggestion is are you annually taking a compensation um, survey and making sure that your organization is staying and you know not necessarily at the high end but definitely not at the low end somewhere in between the middle or the high end of what the compensation should be including the salary and all the benefits incentives bonuses that go along with that right if you're not you should definitely do so to make sure and by the way if you're going to ask that question on an employee engagement survey or an employee satisfaction survey be prepared to do something about it and respond if the results come back that they don't feel like overall that they're paid fairly. Number three, poor management. Oh, I got to take a deep breath on this one. Poor management. That, my friend, is the very reason why most people leave is because of management. Um, they don't leave. They don't check out because of the company. They check out because of the person they're working for, right? And one of the HBR articles that I read recently talked about middle managers really not getting training on what it is to be a manager and a leader because, you know, there's a huge difference between leading and managing. That's another video. Um, ten years. The average was ten years. That is crazy. Why would you promote someone into management they haven't supervised or managed or led before and now you're not going to give them training around the people skills, the soft skills. So don't be one of those people. Don't be one of those organizations. Make sure that when you're promoting that you're giving them some tutelage behind it as well because you don't want your workforce leaving because you didn't stop to promote uh, or to train that individual um, in. And the other thing is many of the senior executives that are in place now, I'm sure you're not one of those individuals I'm about to talk about, right? But the reality is they are not effective leading managers at this point. What got them there isn't necessarily what today's workforce is looking for. And so again, they begin to turn off today's worker because of poor management skills. And it's not because of poor management skills, it's because of poor leadership skills. So that's number three. Number four I talked about was a poor product or service. So it's difficult to keep people engaged if the customer service side or the product in which I am selling and supporting, I don't believe in it. So that's a tough one. So you want to make sure that when you hire people that they are aligned with the product that you're selling, that you're manufacturing, um, as well as the customer service stays priority number one. And I would be remiss if I didn't say, if everyone in your organization is not top notch on customer service, as you're watching this video right now, your least likely most you disemboweled, disengaged employee is actually waiting on your customer right now, is on the phone with your customer right now. It is taking that customer service call right now in your call center, um, in your help center. So you want to make sure that they're engaged and that they're happy as well. And then the fifth one was the coworkers. Gosh, there's nothing more frustrating to hear a high potential or to see that a high potential is left in organization because they are so frustrated with the fact that their coworkers were not 
pulling their weight. We're not held to the same level of um, accountability. So don't overlook your high potentials and think that you've got them because they're rock stars while your day is being ate up and spun off and the life sucked out of you by those lower performing um, individuals or those eh, 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 engaged individuals. So make sure you're taking care of your high performers as well. So those are the five things, the five reasons that they often leave. And again, that was job, money, poor management, um, don't believe in the product or service anymore, the customer service that is giving. And then finally, other coworkers, they, they are not getting along with their other coworkers. So, which all of that stuff has to do about your culture, by the way. My name again is Shelly Smith, the owner of Premier Rapport. If you're interested in hearing more about that or getting some tips around tracking why your employees leave and then doing something about it, give me a shout out. Contact me, Shelly at PremierRapport.com. Until then, remember, people matter. Workplace culture matters. Have a great day.